Japan is the future. It's the ultimate place of convenience. Their society strives for efficiency. Each floor of this building lights up and tells you what's on that floor. Even after six visits here, I'm still stunned by the ever-evolving culture that opens my eyes in more ways than you can imagine. Just walking down the street, any street, and every one of my senses is overwhelmed. If you've ever seen Lost in Translation, that movie perfectly depicts the feeling of Tokyo. Much like Bill Murray, I am lost in translation here, but I absolutely love it. Konnichiwa. Oh, konnichiwa. <laughs> Japan is different. It's electric, it's sexy, it's tasty, it's confusing, but above all, it's futuristic. The Japanese are innovators. They somehow figure things out decades before the rest of the world, either because they are geniuses or the fact that they've lived their entire existence in isolation, or both. Here are 10 ways Japan is 10 years ahead of the world. One, bullet trains. So this is the bullet train to Osaka. We're gonna go check it out. Let's see what we can find. In Japan, there are over 2,300 kilometers of track with trains going 320 kilometers per hour. They carry more than 360 million passengers per year, more than the entire population of the USA. The 500 kilometer journey from Tokyo to Kyoto takes seven hours by car, but you can zip by in two hours on the bullet train. Two, robots. <laughs> Call me crazy, but I think robots will be driving cars within 10 years in Japan. 600 bucks for this guy. They're already serving you lunch, helping you in stores, and staring at you in windows. Like this guy named Pepper, who's found at SoftBank. He can analyze your facial expressions, follow you around, guess your current mood, or just be a cool friend to hang out with. Three, arcade gaming. That arcade is like 10 stories tall. A large amount of Japanese men are obsessed with arcades, and they are really skilled, especially at the reaction game. These games make me feel like I'm in the 23rd century. Almost every video game you played as a kid was invented in Japan, so it's kind of in their blood to be gamers. Four, super toilets. There's no place more enjoyable to go to the bathroom than Japan. I actually look forward to it. The toilets are so advanced, heating up your butt, cleaning it spotless. <laughs> just squirted me. And some high-tech toilets can even check your blood pressure, urine, protein, weight, and body fat. Five, vending machines. While vending machines aren't uniquely Japanese, Japan's vending machines are unique and innovative. The country has five and a half million vending machines. That took about one second. And not only for cold drinks, but for piping hot cappuccinos, strange toys, and a bunch of other wacky items. Spaghetti bolognese sauce. Just in case you wanted any carrots. Ice cream vending machine. And this one here is sells popcorn. No joke, it's actually really good. It's common to order meals at restaurants from a vending machine, which just makes life easier. It's like an alley, a really creepy alley. It goes in even more. This is weird, man. Like, who buys this stuff? Six, public transportation. For a city with 38 million people, it boggles my mind how immaculate their metro systems are. I say systems because you have multiple rail networks in one city. <laughs> There are 882 interconnected rail stations in the Tokyo metropolis. Shinjuku Station is the busiest train station in the world with 3.64 million passengers daily. This place is a madhouse. There's just a whole new world happening underground in Tokyo. Seven, automated car parking. To save space, the Japanese invented parking lots where they stack cars on top of each other. Many apartment complexes, hotels, and restaurants have them. Think of it like a vending machine for cars. 8. Future Fashion Just walk down the street in Tokyo's Akihabara district and you'll spot many people dressed like it's the 22nd century. Decked out in retro sci-fi gear and styles that you've never even thought of. And also, maids. 9. Touchscreen menus At many upscale restaurants, there's no need for hostesses and waiters when you can have an iPad or a cutting edge screen like this one to order your food. Order! Mm. 10. The Little Things to touch on a bunch of other random things. Guys, I'm staying at a budget hotel. I just got out of the shower and it automatically cleans the window. So in the middle of the street, they have these touch screen things to get information. The heaters have fans waving over it to evenly spread the warmth. The taxis will automatically open the door for you. And these vending machines are on a whole new level. Oh, is that a vending machine? Yeah, it is a vending machine. Oh, so you pay with your Metro Guard? While these things may exist in other countries, Japan takes them to a new level. These 10 reasons, among many others, are why I think Japan is the most futuristic country on earth. You gotta come here and see it to believe it. At 
home, when I think of 7-Eleven, I only think of gas and Slurpees. That's about it. I would never ever consider getting a meal there. In Japan, 7-Eleven has a completely new meaning. There are no gas or Slurpees. The food is delicious and I can buy anything here. Japan puts the convenience in convenience store. Despite being founded in the US, Japan has owned a 70% stake in the company since 1990. There are more than 20,000 7-Elevens in Japan, twice more than the second most country, the USA. When I search for 7-Eleven on my phone, there's like eight within two blocks. In Japan, 7-Eleven is your one-stop shop for pretty much anything and everything, and it's their number one food product retailer. That looks so good. I actually look forward to eating there. You can't walk one block in Tokyo without seeing a 7-Eleven or four on the same intersection. All right, let's talk food. No idea what these are, but these are pretty good. Fresh sushi, rice wrapped in seaweed, sandwiches, salads, prepared meals which cook instantly with their in-house microwave, and the largest assortment of drinks you can possibly imagine. These little mushroom things are really good. Shall we talk booze? Just look at these shelves. It's basically like a winery in here. Are you in a hurry? You could pre-order takeaway. Feeling lazy? Go on their website or app and order delivery meals. And when I say fresh, I mean fresh. Don't ever worry about the food going bad because they stock the shelves multiple times daily. It's almost guaranteed to be fresher food than any restaurant. But there's more beyond food. It's a bank where there's more ATMs than you could ever need. At 7-Eleven, you can pay your phone bills, utility bills, charge your metro card, and photocopy or scan documents. You can pick up mail or schedule deliveries to a nearby 7-Eleven. You can buy sporting event tickets like soccer games. <laughs> You can even buy body warming devices with sticky sides that you can attach to your butt. Got a butt warmer. Not to mention, there's free Wi-Fi so you can work and friendly employees who are always there to assist you. Message to the rest of the world, you better up your convenience game because that is 7-Eleven in Japan. For the record, these butt warmer things actually work. This Japanese slot game generates more revenue than Las Vegas and Macau combined. It's called Pachinko. It makes up more than 4% of Japan's GDP. 4% out of companies like Honda, Toyota, Sony, Panasonic, Mitsubishi. These are all Japanese companies. The game involves small steel balls bouncing around in a vertical pinball machine. That's it. Think 24 hour multi-level arcade meets rowdy casino meets rave. Any foreigner who walks past one in Japan will instantly be aware. Yep. That's a pachinko. Crazy neon signs, flashing strobe lights, loud noises that entail never-ending chimes, bells, dings, and megaphone announcements over blasting techno music. Pachinko attracts millions upon millions of players every day, and some stay there all day long. It's an extremely addictive game that resembles Japanese culture in a nutshell. I've never played before, but it's time to give it a go. As soon as I entered, I was blasted with a cloud of cigarette smoke. This place is so freaking crowded that I couldn't find an open seat. God, that place gives you a headache after five minutes. I just lost 50 bucks, but at least I contributed to 4% of Japan's GDP. <laughs> Tokyo is weird. But a cool kind of weird. Konnichiwa! Unless you're Japanese, nothing in Tokyo will be normal to you. And that's what makes this place so unique. I'm about to open your world into one of the most bizarre and funky experiences in Tokyo. Hello, welcome! Welcome to the Lobo Restaurant! Hello! If that's the introduction I had, imagine how much weirder it gets inside. Okay, I'm about to go inside and start the show. When you first enter, you go to the pregame room with some casual robots on guitar and a surprisingly good singer. Then, we are called down to the main room in the basement where we walk through the trippiest hallways imaginable. And it's showtime. Despite being touristy, this is entertainment at its finest. It's a complete sensory overload with lots of colors, loud music, strong drinks, intense strobe lights. Even the urinals are painted gold with sparkling lights. It starts off with a bunch of people banging on instruments and dancing around the floor like maniacs. Then huge robots come out and fight each other over a really cheesy storyline. And then it just keeps getting crazier and crazier. Have you ever seen robots do the YMCA? It should be mandatory to have four drinks here and turn off your brain from thinking. Just watch and watch 
and watch. By the end, I couldn't think straight, but it was definitely worth the experience. If you come to Tokyo and want to get weird, then you better go to the robot restaurant. See you, bye bye. <laughs> Sorry! Shy boy! I'm a shy boy! The island of Okinawa, Japan is known to have the longest life expectancy in the world. What that means is that it's common for people to live well past a hundred years old. I came here to find out why Okinawans are able to live such long and healthy lives and what I discovered will leave you stunned. It's 6.30 a.m. This is a morning exercise for elderly people. How do you feel after doing the morning exercise? Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> we can go in? Oh, yeah. please. Thank you. Hi, hi. <laughs> She's like everybody's favorite grandmother. Where you come in her house, she gives you tea and she gives you food and she makes you feel comfortable. We've just entered the amazing Okinawan kitchen. We have all these little bowls and cabinets here. So cool to be in this kitchen right now. We are about to feast. Look at this food. She's been preparing it in the kitchen, homemade, with a perfect touch. Look how many little dishes there are. Back in time. Do you enjoy life in your late 80s? Ah, yeah. Yes. Volunteer. Volunteer. Why Okinawa? Like, why are the people here able to live so long? Even in the inside of a house, they move. Oh, they always moving around inside of the house. So this is that. You're not lazy. No, no, not lazy. No. Just like a, you know, house chore, house chore. It gives them a good exercise. This is miso. Ah, miso, original miso. Ah, this is rice, sashimi, dashi macaron, stir fry pumpkin mixed with pork, potato, and mixed with Okinawa seaweed called mozuku. Japanese food is. The best of the best, and this is going to be a great meal. Itadakimasu. <laughs> in, in the U.S., it's very rare that somebody lives to 90. For you, is it is it normal? Like most of your friends are still healthy. Do you actually know people that are over 100? Ah, mother-in-law passed away at the age of 105. 105, her mother-in-law. Yes. Wow. Wow. What is the key to living a long, happy life? Man. Feel excited and doing many things with people around her. Okinawa is a chain of tropical islands about 400 miles southwest of mainland Japan. I'm actually closer to Manila than I am to Tokyo, but this is a land that's completely different than the Japan you know of. Something just feels different here. There are no big cities and busy crosswalks. No neon signs, no cherry blossoms, or huge green forests or massive Buddhist temples. Instead, pristine white sanded beaches, hot springs, turquoise water, and beautiful coconut trees. The local dialect here is nowhere near that of mainland Japan. And how can you say arigatou gozaimasu? In short, Okinawa is both a cultural phenomenon and a tropical wonderland with as many beautiful sights and laid-back vibes as the Philippines. This is about as tropical as a beach can get. Look at the sand color. But you might know about Okinawa for other reasons than beauty. It was the site of the largest and deadliest campaign in the Pacific during World War II, mainly between Japan and the USA. Sadly, more than 100,000 casualties were reported and it was a major turning point in the war, leading to the atomic bombs of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But that was almost 80 years ago, and even though there are reminders of the war around the island, as I'm walking around Okinawa, I can't help but notice the extreme American presence here. The truth is that many generations have passed and life carries on. So what's it like to live here? I mean, you're living like in nature, like so close to nature, which is the best part of it. So like we wake up in the morning in the summers and when it's nice, we come down and we swim and then we go help out at the farm and then cook and do whatever. Do it sounds like the most history. ideal lifestyle in the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the main island is called Okinawa Island, which is where the airport and the capital city called Naha are located. It's also where more than 90% of Okinawa's 1.5 million residents are living. But somehow, it's so quiet and still. My reason for coming here is very specific. Okinawa is widely considered as the healthiest place on Earth, and I want to discover why. 
Everywhere I go here in Okinawa, I see plenty of elderly people just walking around the streets, doing tai chi at the park, riding bikes, or playing this croquet-like game called gate ball. And it makes me think, maybe getting old isn't so bad after all. So this is a monument for the centenarian. A centenarian is a person who has lived to be a hundred years old or longer, and Okinawa literally has hundreds of them. I was lucky enough to meet one centenarian who is so lovely and sweet. When I showed up at her house, she was just chilling at home alone and doing chores all by herself at a hundred years old. I, I heard that you just turned a hundred. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> they give you this? It's the Japanese government, the Prime Minister will give you this certificate. Wow! Congratulations! Congratulations! How does it feel to be a hundred? Yeah, we naturally turn 100 years old. How do you stay busy in, in, in your day to day life? So she's always just staying busy around the house. Uh, he's training a bathroom in her really? legs. So he she bought that one. <laughs> the stepping machine. Really? <laughs> You're still training? Like that. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Do you receive any help from your, your kids or anybody in the community? I mean, mm. for getting dressed or bathing or you do everything by yourself? She does everything all by herself. Wow, everything all by herself. <laughs> that's incredible. You, you make me look forward to getting older. <laughs> As you and I both know, a healthy life starts and ends with cuisine. I was taken around Okinawa by my local friends Mari and Sena, and we couldn't stop eating because the food is that fresh and that tasty. This is pork from the island, oh, and part, about 80% right? of the vegetables like are from Okinawa. So when you see a plate like this, it begins to make sense why Okinawa is the healthiest place in the world. <laughs> oh my god. Before I tell you more about what Okinawans eat, there's a valuable lesson in how they eat. Remember this term, hara hachi bu. Translation, stop eating when you are 80% full. Why? Because it takes 20 minutes for your stomach to send signals to the brain that it is full. It's important not to spend those 20 minutes shoving food down your throat. Just simply push the plate away. So in simple just, words, not overeating. <laughs> so they just like, they don't binge eat. Like in the U.S., people just keep eating, yeah. keep eating. They'll finish like what's on their plate, but you don't like put way too much on or yeah. anything. So it's you, like portion control. Yeah, yeah. Okinawa is filled with an abundance of fresh fruits, vegetables, and seaweed. In fact, they produce more seaweed than any other place in Japan. The main island is covered in farms and plantations for fresh vegetables. As you can see, there's an abundance of plants and vegetation here in Okinawa, which is partly why the cuisine is so healthy. This is a sugarcane plantation. That's pretty awesome. In summer season, my uh, planted a uh, sweet potato and mustard leaf. And uh, winter season, I planting and uh, the main uh, main plant is celery. Nice sponge cucumber. All Okinawan people like uh, this vegetable. This uh, Okinawan vegetable is uh, very healthy and contain uh, many minerals. In Okinawa, it's better than the mainland for vegetables. Yes, yes, uh, because uh, Okinawan soil. Is a many contain very minerals. Why do you have a badminton racket? Yes, we use in the such <laughs> such as sponge cucumber fruits. Oh, so when you feel it. Yes. Even the beverages in Okinawa are healthy. Instead of water, many Okinawans choose tea, and you can find incredible homegrown tea all over the island. My friends took me to a little hole-in-the-wall tea shop, and I was absolutely stunned. So they're all organic. They're all from the northern part of the island. How did you become such a tea enthusiast? All these medicinal herbs that grow like in the wilderness, they're very, very strong and like they'll live like no matter what. So by drinking them, we get that power like from nature as well. I love it. Yeah. Whoa, they all smell different. Yeah. Oh, she makes them. All right, we are about to try this amazing looking tea. Cheers. You know, I've had a lot of cups of teas in my life and nothing has tasted like this. Like the combination. That is so good. 
So this is that brown sugar that I saw on the market. And she served it, she said eat it with it here. It looks like little rock candy. It's pure sugar. Mm -hmm. Pure sugar. <laughs> if you drink this every day, you'll definitely live past 100. <laughs> You're 75? That's crazy. So in Japanese culture, you need to use two hands like this. Oh yeah, yeah. Which of course. Mostly for like alcoholic drinks. Yeah, but she's like elderly, right? So you yes. have to like respect. <laughs> so you must use two hands when you take or receive something. Not only is their tea healthy, but it's also their local liquor. Here, it's not sake, it's called awamuri. Healthy, very healthy. <laughs> Why is it so healthy? Vinegar, vinegar. Oh, it's vinegar. <laughs> Whoa. I've never tried anything like that. All right, so what is this one? This one's 30%. 30%. And it's made out of rice that was produced in Okinawa. Cool, cheers. <laughs> That tastes more like... Yeah, but the next one is... What, 90%? No, 51. Oh, it says Pretty it right high. here in the <laughs> So she's making us try all of these bottles in a row. <laughs> and each of them gets stronger and stronger. This one's 51%. Okay. okay. More of a taste. Oh, more of like really a, different. a flavor. <laughs> no, she wants you to try three. Okay, I'll try if you drink it with me. It's <laughs> okay. Favorite, favorite. Favorite. Yes. Happy my, time? My, my happy time, yes, yes. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> you got the big one. Whoa. That one hits. It burns. So, what are the ingredients inside of the of that bottle? The rice and mm -hmm. then kurokoji king. It's a type of bacteria that okay. they use to mix the drink acid. Got it. There's no sugar in these drinks? So it breaks down the sugars in the rice mm. and that's where the sweetness comes from. So they can make it without like any sugar. So it has like zero sugar. What we've learned is that the local liquor here is so healthy. When they drink it, there's no sugar in it. It's like medicinal. So people can get drunk without gaining weight. Food and beverage is only one part of the equation for why Okinawans live longer than anyone else. The second part is staying active. Karate is one of the most well-known martial arts in the world and it was created in Okinawa. Have you ever seen that movie Karate Kid? The entire movie is based in Okinawa. Wax on, right hand. Wax off, left hand. This form of unarmed combat became popular in the 1400s and finally made its way to mainland Japan in the early 1900s when kids at school started practicing it. Karate got so popular worldwide that it debuted as an Olympic sport in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Will it go to q and a? It's the most magnificent win for Japan. This takes me back to my days in Korea. I trained to get a black belt in Taekwondo, but that's all feet and kicks. This is all hands. that he's got a Zoom class going. There's people in Tokyo taking the class right now. Karate is a self-defense. Mm. Okinawan traditional karate is a how not to fight, how not to lose, how to teach about uh, fighting. How many years have you been doing karate? Uh, Since he was uh, 50 years old. Now he's 72 years old. Wow. And how does it make you feel that you're still doing it all these years? Every time he comes here, and he's expecting I can feel something extraordinary feeling in a everyday casual life because he is looking for the access to support. Aside from karate, Okinawans have this thing called moi. It basically means a tight-knit community of five or more people who regularly meet up, whether it's shopping or eating or doing sports. It helps them maintain a social life into their old age, and almost everyone does it. Many studies have shown that social connection improves health and longevity by reducing stress. It depends on the moi, but every person when they gather pays like maybe fifty dollars or like a hundred dollars and they put it into a pot and someone takes it home it like circles back and they go in order so it all comes back to you at one point so it's like a plus minus zero type of thing whoa i think this moi is one of the secrets to how people live so long and enjoy their life in their 80s and 90s it has to be one of the factors why because i never heard of something like that 
I'm telling you guys that the elderly people here are very social and it's absolutely amazing. Do you want beer? Yeah. Beer. Yeah. I buy it for you. <laughs> Two beers? Thank you. Oh, thank you. I got the examples. Yeah. What's your name? Drew. Hey? Drew. You. You? Yo, yo. My, my name is Hiroshi. Hiroshi. Hiroshi, yeah. Hiroshi. Okay, good. Huh? Dangerous. Dangerous. <laughs> what a moment this is, just chilling at this bar with all these old men, drinking beer, local beer in Okinawa, Japan. It's me. That's you, yeah. The little screen, see that? <laughs> He's just pounding sake over here. Japan is by far the most interesting culture in the world. The elderly community here stays active by tackling chores together, and the kinds of sports that they play do not stop at karate. Konnichiwa. Hi, konnichiwa. Welcome. Konnichiwa. It's so cute how all the old people come here and they all just start working immediately. They're sweeping, they're cleaning, they're brushing. Unbelievable, it's so special to witness this and they all look so happy. This game is basically like croquet meets a putting contest. And it's fun. Oh, good shot. There we go. Got it. Who's the winner? She's the winner? Good job! After spending three amazing days in Okinawa, I can finally understand why this island is the home of the world's oldest people. They live so happy, healthy, and carefree in this beautiful land with rich soil. I feel very happy traveling here and this story was just so enriching to make. In a world where we're all so scared to get old and die, it's exactly the opposite in Okinawa. Old age is celebrated and it actually gives me hope for the future. We're near Prom Punk Station, we're walking on the Sukhumvit Street and all of a sudden we see this little restaurant which to me means absolutely nothing. I can't even read it, I can't understand it. So this is the opening hour, Japanese lender. Weekdays, 5pm to the uh, midnight. All of these products are clearly imported from Japan. No English or Thai on the box. Japanese use books. Guidebook for Japanese hot information. This is a girl's bar, it's only Japanese. Good. Just yes. like in Japan? Yes. Good morning guys, I'm here today with my Japanese friend Yusuke who's a resident of Bangkok. And we are going to show you how Japanese we can live for a day in the city. Let's do it man. Bangkok is a massive, sprawling metropolis with a large and diverse expat community. You can experience any type of culture and eat any kind of cuisine, whether it be Korean, Peruvian, Vietnamese, Ethiopian, or Indian. But Japanese? You won't believe what we are about to show you. Thailand has the fourth highest number of Japanese expats in the world, behind the US, China, and Australia. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Yosuke. 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 Your name? Yusuke. Ah, Yusuke, Yusuke. Yeah. This is like the Shinjuku of, of Bangkok. Three quarters of them live in Bangkok, or roughly 50,000 people, which doesn't sound like a lot, but their influence has had a much larger impact on Thai society. Are you interested in Japanese culture? Actually, yes. Bangkok alone has 2,300 Japanese restaurants. Those are all Japanese restaurants? You think a lot? So he said that every day he eats a Japanese food. To go along with numerous Japanese markets, karaoke bars, massage parlors, and more. It's time to see how Japanese we can live for a day in Bangkok. So we are headed to Prompong Station, which is the core Japanese area. Then I introduced uh, you to uh, my favorite place, uh, the Great Japanese. There is a supermarket uh -huh. uh, called the Fuji Super. It's very famous among Japanese. It's just like Safeway back home, but 100% of the items are imported from Japan. Literally as if you walked into a super center in Tokyo. It's a, a corner of the fresh fish and it's with your sashimi. Is this the best place? Yeah, best place. Sometimes I have a sushi party mm. with my girlfriend. It's lunchtime, and you know what that means? Japanese food, one of my favorites. Yusuke took me to his favorite hidden gem. A difficult for foreigners what to is, enter. What does that mean? Uh, Fresh soba, that's my name of the restaurant. I feel like I'm back to Japan. Okay. Yeah. Really excited. 
すいません今って営業しますかお好み焼きの、はい、豚を1つ豚を1つはいありがとうございます This is pork お好み焼き They cook it like a pancake, right? Yeah, pancake And mix with the dough and egg and pork And vegetable、yeah. and spices Oh yeah <laughs> Gotta top it off with some mochi ice cream. Let's open it. Let's all take a bite. Yeah, you take it. Thank you.、Mm. Belly's full. We headed for the batting cage because baseball is life in Japan. Funny thing is that almost nobody in Thailand plays baseball, so this place is exclusively built for the Japanese. It's like a batting school for children, for elementary school, middle school. Do you know how to play baseball?、Uh, a little.、Did、When、you? I was in elementary school, too. I am not that serious. Ichiro in the house! You officially kicked my ass. <laughs> it's time to seek out Japanese relaxation. Yeah, it's the best spa in Bangkok for the Japanese style. Got the bamboo here on the walkway. Choose your kimono, take off your shoes, and enter. I obviously couldn't film while everyone was naked, but that was truly a great spa. The lounge room is filled with Japanese newspapers and Japanese TV shows. Pretty surreal. How do you feel, man, after that?、Uh, yeah, it's so relaxed. Refreshing? Yeah. Ready to continue the day. To the next restaurant, of course. If you don't know what this stuff is, you'll find out by the end of this video. Oh, yes. Kampai. Kampai. Smooth. Is kampai good? I've never had anything like this one before. Yeah, that's salmon egg, and the shrimp and egg, and the salmon and the tuna. Wow. The seaweed is on the outside, like Japanese style. Yeah. Because in the US, sometimes they put the seaweed on the inside. The sushi here is as good as it gets. En route to our last stop, we hit the arcade as they love to play in Japan. Are you ready? Yes! I'm not very good at this. As we're trying to find a sake bar. You have to Google in Japanese to find a Japanese restaurant review by Japanese bloggers. <laughs> yeah, something like this, and a good review from the Japanese is the best place. Okay, let's come inside. Oh, yeah, look at this. Sake is a Japanese rice wine, kind of like soju in Korea, but it's much tastier. This place has hundreds of bottles to choose from, and pouring it in the glass is like an art in itself. Simply amazing. Just when I thought today couldn't get any more Japanese, I came to the toilet. Got that rear cleansing. The moral of this video is instead of spending 400 bucks and 12 total hours of flying time to Japan, you can find pretty much anything Japanese in Bangkok. I got the Thank you very much. Thank you.